Hey y'all, it's your girl Angelie, and today's episode is gonna be why I keep saying episode. Hey guys, it's your girl Angelie, and today's video is gonna be a part two to my how to secure a salary job before you graduate college video. So um, if you missed that video, I'm gonna link that video in the description box below, as well as in my end credits. But make sure you watch that before you watch this. Or you can watch this first and then go back and watch that. But whatever you do, make sure you watch both of the videos to get the full gist of what I'm going to be saying today. If you haven't already or if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Like this video, even leave a comment telling me how your job search has been going or like what tips and tricks that you use that I might have not touched on that really helped you secure your job, secure your bag in 2020 or last year or for next year, whatever it is, leave the comment below. I would love to hear about it. Okay, so the first tip I have for you is going to be after you apply for the job, after you got an interview date, you schedule your interview, boom, we're at, we're, we're at the day of the interview. What you need to do is because first impressions always matter and even though we're in a whole corona situation right now, most of your interviews will be virtual interviews through Skype or Zoom, but still prepare as if you're going to an in-person interview. And what I mean by that is picking out an outfit, I mean business casual or business attire preferred, just like just like you'll be going into a real interview because your employer is going to love the fact that you took time out of your day to plan an outfit just to sit in your bedroom or just to sit in your living room and talk to them via webcam. So make sure you pick an outfit because first impressions matter and also make sure that your interviewing space is quiet, clean, and free of distractions because your interviewer is going to take every look thing into account while you're interviewing with them because you don't want to have like be in the middle of a sentence and you have like noise in the back or this and that going on it's just like too much going on and your interviewer is not going to be able to focus on you but they're going to be focused on what's going on around you and you definitely do not want that you want all the attention to be on you at every single moment especially if it's a group interview you don't want to be that candidate with the loud background has to keep putting themselves on mute x y and z so if you're busy that day, just reschedule the interview like your employer is going to understand. I'd rather you reschedule when you're completely prepared than like half-ass and now boom, you lost your opportunity or like your employer really wasn't feeling it. Also, make sure your energy is on 10, like because it's a, it's a virtual interview, like it's gonna be harder for you to like show your personality to the employer. So be sure to keep eye contact and be sure that your your energy levels is on 10, you're like, your answers are articulated properly you get like everything you need to say out in a timely manner x y and z just make sure you have all that together as far as appearance as far as first impression as far as just leaving a lasting impression on your interviewer who's going to like log out of that zoom chat and be like wow i remember this person i love their interview i love their charisma their spunk their x y and z just do anything to be remembered after your interviewer is done asking you questions, your interviewer is always gonna say, okay, do you have any questions for me? At first, I'm not gonna lie, I used to always say no just to get the interview over with, but what I've learned is like, if you ask the interviewer a question, like not even like a business related question, but something about like their personal life, like my favorite question is asked is, oh, how did you get involved in this company? Give them a question that's gonna really make them think and really like have them give you the best possible answer they're able to give you and you asking them that question is going to also leave a lasting impression on them as well because you might have been the only person asking them a question or even if you wasn't the only person asking them a question you might have been the only person asking them like that specific type of question that's going to always like make them think and make them like want to give you the best possible answer available at that moment okay now that you're done with the interview you both logged off you both said your goodbyes what you need to do and i cannot put an emphasis on need the most make sure you send a thank you email like literally this gets them every time i promise you like you sending a thank you email not only shows them that you're considerate of their time and you appreciate them taking the time out to talk to you it even like shows them how your work ethic 
in the sense that like you're you're the type of person to follow up in the thank you letter make sure to include like something like a personal a personal fun fact that they told you about themselves at the beginning like for example um in the introductory part of your interview your interviewer is going to tell you a little bit about themselves and a little bit about the company so for example um one time an interviewer told me like yeah you know, I was born and raised in Atlanta. I loved um, watching the Atlanta Falcons growing up, X, Y, and Z. So in my thank you letter, I would say, oh, it was nice hearing about your life in Atlanta and your love for the Falcons. Maybe one day we might catch a game. You know, something that's going to really show the interviewer you are really listening and you're really honing in and you're really detail oriented. Like people love when people are detail oriented. And just remember the small things about themselves, like the small things always matter whether or not you get the position after your interview still sending that thank you letter just still shows them that you were really grateful and your gratitude is like at 10 and they might consider you for another position or they might keep your contact when something else opens up and you might not even have to go through another interview you might just get the job on spot because you took five ten minutes out of your life to send that person a thank you letter so you know try it Okay, so now that you've had the interview, you sent your thank you letter, boom, you get that email maybe a week later, ha, ah, congratulations, you've been offered the position, boom. They send you an offer letter, you check everything out, everything looks nice and dandy, and now you probably want to negotiate your offer letter, negotiate your salary. It's nothing wrong with wanting to negotiate your salary because sometimes companies believe that since you're fresh out of college, you're going to accept whatever number they throw out at you. But sometimes you need to know your worth, you need to value your worth, and you need to let them know that this degree wasn't free. Run me my coins, run me my check, run me something. Like, honestly. So with me, um, I personally didn't negotiate my offer letter because for coming out of college, it was a pretty good amount that I really didn't need to negotiate. But for some people, negotiating up, negotiating their offer letter is something that they always do. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to negotiate. So one, set a high salary. So even if it gets negotiated down, it'll still be a little more than previously offered. Two, state um, your experiences or what talents and stuff that you have that will contribute to the company that will show them that okay me offering you more is something that i wouldn't be losing out on the end because of your experience like what you could offer stuff like that so just basically show the company your worth and show the company that the skills that you possess will be an asset to them and they have no other choice but to accept you know and relook at some numbers also another thing with offer letters sometimes if you're going to be moving from state to state so for example me i'm moving from florida to new york in july or june depending on when this corona situation you know settles down a little bit some companies may or may not offer you a relocation package so what a relocation package is basically is a package that will help you and help your transition from state to state and that could be they re, uh, reimburse you the money that's, that you spent to move. So like flight, um, moving your stuff, finding an apartment, paying deposit. You pay that out of pocket first and then they will reimburse you after you show them receipts. Some companies, they give you like money up front. They might give you like 5000 6000 just to like help, you know, lower the cost or help the burden of moving state to state so quickly because sometimes the turnaround time from um, getting hired to starting is like literally like two to three weeks or even like a month or so depending on your job so some people don't have that amount of money saved up to just up and leave so abruptly so some companies they will just give you money up front and lastly other companies they will go half with you on the total cost so if it costs you like six thousand to like move from LA to New York, your company should give you at least 3000 to just help lower the cost of moving. So if your company doesn't outright tell you they have a relocation package, um, you should just go ahead and ask so the, the worst they can say is no. And if they say no, that's up to you to determine if you still want to move forward and accept the job or not. But um, my company, they, they didn't offer it at first, but I asked them about it and they told me they're going to send me my new offer letter like this month. So I'm waiting on that. But like I said, like I always say, closed mouths do not get fed. If you want something, the worst somebody could tell you is no. Like literally that's the worst they could do is tell you no. So I'd rather ask and get, tell, get told no than like not ask and wonder like, damn, if I would have asked, 
what would happen. So just open your mouth, speak, use your words, <laughs> and communicate efficiently to your employer and tell them what you need and tell them what you want. Okay, so something else I could add on is to make sure even whether you're hired or not, just keep good energy and just keep good faith throughout the whole interviewing, hiring process because what's for you is for you. What's not for you is just not for you. So just don't be upset or don't be angry because you weren't offered a position. Just still keep that line of communication open between you and your recruiter or you and the company because you never know if something op opens up later on down the line, you might be one of the first people they reach out to because um, they have something available and they remember you and they like they like um, what you said in the interview. So just make sure that you don't be salty, you don't burn bridges. Like that's one thing I've learned. Just because a company tells you no, doesn't mean you should like burn the bridge with them. Like you never know what could happen two or three years down the line. They could always turn back and you know reach out to you or if you could always reapply to another position within that same company and because they seen your name and because you already had that line of communication open, you might just get hired because of that, just off the strength of I know your work ethic because I've seen what you did in your previous interview. You don't have to go through it again. So just don't be salty about anything. Like I said before, what's for you is for you. What's not is not. Like job searching has been the hardest thing I have done in my 22 years of life. Like I cannot tell you how many jobs I applied for on um, Indeed, LinkedIn, Monster. Like I could say I probably applied to maybe like 60 plus jobs sitting no, literally like up, upwards to 100 jobs I've applied for and like the the type of jobs ranges from like what I really want to do to like what I'm settling for but just know like what's for you is for you and like God will really put you in a situation that will make that will have you coming out of it the best version of yourself and that's all I could really say like I've been turned down by like a lot of jobs when I tell you guys I've been turned down by a lot of jobs and it's not even funny like getting that email that oh um we're sorry to inform you or we're, we're, we regret to inform you like those emails are really like at first they were like so crushing it was like damn am I not good enough but, like sometimes you just have to know like if it's not for you like God will not put you in any situation where he doesn't see you succeeding in or if he does it's just to make you a stronger person and I truly believe like me moving to New York is really gonna help me become the best version of myself because I just feel like it's gonna bring out that hustle in me that I know I have but I haven't really had to put to use because you know everything's been like steady in my life hasn't really been any like major ups or major downs so I just feel like moving and starting my adult life is gonna show me like okay this is real life now like ain't no mommy daddy money ain't no like <laughs> ain't no financial aid money ain't no refund check ain't none of that like so i'm just ready to hop into it with an open mind open heart and just accept everything that is going to come my way like the good the bad the ugly like I'm just here for it all. Okay, so now that you've been offered a job, you've um, negotiated your salary, you've asked and got granted your um, relocation package, now all you have to do is accept the position. So when you accept the position, um, I know for my company, they sent me an offer letter and I had to like virtually sign the letter. Other people, um, you could do it that way or like they'll send you like, they'll set you up with like a work portal and you go through the work portal and accept the terms and condition of your offer. It's like a lot of different ways to accept the offer letter, but once you accept it, you're good to go and now you have a job. So hopefully these tips and tricks from my first video and this video really helped you um, on your job search or even if you're not looking for a job, you might be looking for one soon. Hopefully you can use these tips to guide you through the whole process. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and also leave comments below so we can help each other out. And see you next week in my next video. Later!